I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today's topic is, does marijuana help with ADHD? Surprisingly and disappointingly, not a lot of new data on the matter, but take-home message is marijuana use is increasing substantially both in the U.S. and worldwide. There's a growing accumulation of information that marijuana can have some damaging effects on the brain, particularly for young adolescent users. Not a lot of research on marijuana and ADHD, but this is one of the very few topics where there is a little more of substance than I had imagined. And before reading this, I was pretty consistently not supportive of any marijuana use or helping with ADHD. And I would argue that there is some very weak, not rigorously conducted studies, but supportive evidence that in some individuals with ADHD, it can help whether this is generalizable or not. There's no evidence to support that. So begin with what is marijuana? So it's an herbal product. And that means it's, that doesn't mean inherently it's good or bad, but it means that it's difficult to study because each batch may not be the same as the preceding one. So there are two main psychoactive cannabinoids. Cannabinoids are chemicals that bind to cannabinoid receptors in the brain. That's how they're defined. The two main ones we've been studying for years are THC or tetrahydrocannabinol and CBD or cannabidiol. Those are not the only psychoactive substances. So there's at least 80 to 120 different psychoactive components to marijuana. THC and CBD are the most numerous and probably the most potent, but other ones, there's increasing interest in cannabinol and a few others. And in terms of marijuana varieties, there's a big division into sativa and indica varieties. So again, each breeder may have their own idea of whether their plants are in a sativa or indica variety. And there is a general correlation that the sativa varieties are usually high in THC. Indica varieties are usually high in CBD, but this is not a perfect one-to-one correlation. In general, the THC is tied to euphoria, feeling a high, feeling mild hallucinogenic effects. THC is also the component associated with marijuana-induced psychosis. This is a real phenomena. It's not a common one. So this is not reefer madness movies of the 1950s where everyone who smokes a joint is going to go crazy. Pretty clear-cut evidence that rates of developing a full-blown psychotic syndrome are substantially higher among those who smoke marijuana, and it doesn't seem to be just a self-selected population. But again, it's these are low rates overall in the vicinity of one out of a thousand. The CBD, in contrast, is associated with the calming anti-anxiety effects. It does seem to have some pain-relieving effects, and it actually seems to have some protection against psychosis effects. Now, some of this is the THC and the CBD are chemically amazingly similar-looking molecules, but they have considerably different effects when they bind to the cannabinoid endogenous receptors. And particularly, they have different effects on dopamine systems, which are downstream, which result of binding with cannabinoids. Again, part of the difficulty is you don't always know what variety you're getting. You don't always know the precise chemical composition of what you are choosing. And there were studies a few years ago in Colorado, which at that time was the most advanced state in terms of government regulation and checking what's in each batch, and is it really consistent with the labels? More than 50% of the products in that state, the labels just were not meaningfully correlated in terms of CBD content, in terms of THC content. The moral of the story there is you can look at the labels, but they may not be providing a lot of information. If you find a brand or a grower that produces a product that works for you, then you may not get the same results when you switch. Over the years, breeders have very consistently bred varieties that are making substantially, almost an order of magnitude, more CBD and THC in them than there were 20 to 40 years ago. So 
potency continues to increase. We don't know what public health effects that has. Some of the other complications are, again, even though other components may be minor, maybe what's really important for some of the effects are the combination of different cannabinoids together. So when you're conducting studies on pure THC, pure CBD, it's not that the synthetic, if it's made synthetically or compound, is chemically different. It's that the context or other biochemical effects that may be going on may be different. Government, in its wisdom since the early 70s, has said all these substances, psychedelics, LSD, psilocybin, MDMA, ketamine, a little less so, marijuana, are dangerous substances. And for many years, there was no study, no research allowed on them by the government. That's been relaxing over the last few years, but it's meant that there's been a shortage of long-term research on this topic. And also particularly since CBD is a plant-based product and no one's about to get a patent on that, there's less big pharma money to invest in research or studies. Most of the studies that have been done are what we would call naturalistic or observational studies. So they look at people who are using marijuana and sometimes looking at marijuana and have ADHD and see if they're different than people with ADHD who aren't using marijuana. Only randomly controlled study that tried to look at differences and measured executive functions did not find a statistically significant difference between those with ADHD who were using marijuana and that didn't. There is considerable evidence that in growing brains and developing brains, and hopefully all of our brains are growing throughout our lives, but there's a lot of restructuring, a lot of myelination, a lot of things still happening in adolescence, that there may be more risk for psychotic disorders happening in the long run, starting at an earlier age. There may be higher risk for addiction, starting at a younger age. Daily, robust use of marijuana is associated with sort of the picture of the prototypical stoner. Lower motivation, lower energy, poor organization of thoughts, things that are commonly found in ADHD. You would think on the surface that this is a horrible match, that this is not something people with ADHD should be using. On the other hand, there's a number of online and other surveys done of people who have ADHD, and when they ask, does marijuana help you, or do you think it would help? Usually, it's far and away, many more people think it's helpful than who say it's harmful specifically for ADHD symptoms. Again, those are surveys not randomly collected data, so should be taken with a grain of salt. We don't know if those people who wound up using marijuana, particularly those who are using it more regularly, if their brains were somehow different, there's something that predisposed them to using that. So if we see any effects of marijuana use, it's hard to know. Is that because the marijuana use, or is it because their brains were different to begin with? And then compounding it with looking at the subpopulation of those with ADHD and marijuana use. Is this representative of all people with ADHD or just a subset of it? So we do know that ADHD itself does predispose individuals to substance use overall. And overall, the rate, these are ballpark figures. In America, about 20% of individuals during their lifetime have a substance use disorder, including alcohol. Having ADHD puts you close to double that closer to 40%. That's still a minority, but it's a big, sizable minority. And the studies that have looked particularly at marijuana, one that's widely quoted showed that kids with ADHD were seven to eight times more likely to use marijuana than the general population. So one other thing to note is that as marijuana use becomes more prevalent in the general population, then that skews and changes some of the results of these studies. So if marijuana use was only, let's just say, 3 or 4% in the general population, 7 or 8 times as much, maybe 25 or 30%. Right now, if it's getting closer to 15%, the population on some regular basis are using marijuana, it's clearly not 7 to 8 times that rate, which would put you at everyone with ADHD using marijuana. So when people cite statistics, just pay attention to 
when and what era and what the comparison group really was and what was the background rate of use. Older studies before marijuana was legal also were subselecting for a population who is willing to violate the law to use a certain substance. So that may have less relevance or maybe less typical population using marijuana. Now, there is evidence that it's both the inattentive and the hyperactive impulsive factors that increase the likelihood of substance abuse. Hyperactivity and impulsivity, tending to minimize the long-term use and jumping into things, inattentiveness, probably being less aware of negative cognitive effects. None of this is going to address the question of can marijuana be used to alleviate the effects of stimulant medications, particularly feeling over revved up. I mean, it would seem possible that CBD may be helpful in that regard, but again, no rigorous studies on that. There are a handful of studies, again, mostly naturalistic voluntary studies, showing some improvement in executive function, some improvement in performance, some subjective feelings, attention, concentration, sustained effort, motivation were all better with some form of marijuana product. Again, that may range from CBD to THC to some combination above. There's some studies looking at brain functioning and found that there's individuals with ADHD who were using marijuana regularly had somewhat slightly different connections with the cerebellum and different circuitry or strength of connections involving the hippocampus. So there's some, again, weak evidence suggesting that using marijuana with ADHD may have some functional effect on how you are using your brain on specific tasks. Again, so far there isn't a study showing a dramatic increase in performance of executive functions, but some mild suggestive evidence is where I would frame it. So when I back up and say smoking anything is not good for lungs and heart and other body parts in the long run, probably not good for the brain itself. Anything that affects cardiovascular functioning is not going to be good for the brain in the long run. So marijuana, particularly at high doses, may have some effects that are not a good match for ADHD. At lower levels, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and weak evidence that some individuals with ADHD may be able to concentrate better, may be able to be more functional. Cannabinoids are highly fat soluble, last in the brain a long time. I would use this cautiously or approach it cautiously, be aware that there may be lingering or delayed effects and try to use objective measures as to what tasks you're actually functioning better on if you think you're functioning or, and again, particularly looking at motivation, energy, organization of thought, time management, because those, at least in some rigorous studies, are impaired with marijuana products. Small risk of psychosis is a very small risk, but this worry there is in a substantial fraction of those who even have a single episode, it becomes a potentially irreversible lifetime condition. And that the stimulant medications themselves have a risk for increasing or inducing a psychotic state. I do have a video on that. So be safe, be well, and I'll be back with more videos.